So this is the bit for the bottom, is that right? Yeah, it's just a piece of clay rolled out as we roll the other stuff out and just cut into a strip, into a circle and slipped and joined together. That's all that is. So okay. that'll be the base. But I've got to trim it, first of all. I'll, I'll need my potter's, my uh, I'll go and get wheel. that for you. Yeah, my white lining wheel, please. Yeah. There you go. You'll be pleased to hear I successfully oh. hit my head on your... Oh, again. On your low slung oh, wow. kitchen roof. Again. Right, that's that there. So we'll get that on there. And there's a bit of fitting with this. So I'll have to sit down for this and a bit of to and fro just to get it. I think I'll put my clay on my toes. Oh, bugger. It's a nice cuddly bench, this, isn't it? <laughs> right, now to take that down at about... Let's just mark so we'll get... Central, uh, probably about there. I mean, up to three quarters. These just guide marks for me that I'm putting in. Oh, I see, because you're not cutting it straight because the head's got to go at an angle. Exactly, yeah. So, well, not also slightly, and you've got to do this a, a few times just to get it just where I want it. And we've got a bit, a bit of height to play with. I trimmed the base off last of all. So I'll get it to the exact height, 21 and a half. Yeah. You see, steep. I would, because I'm stupid, I would have thought about it from the top down. But of course you don't, because you can just cut it all off the bottom, can't you? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Measure from that's there, the difference between you and, and me. And then trim it off. Right, I think that's more or less... Now, this is a crucial part, because it's obviously such a thick piece, so... Gotta get it in exactly the right place. Make sure we get it all on. Don't drop any air. Right now. That's a front line that. Now I've got to force it to position. You can now, you can kind of feel it when it locks. We can tidy it up later, but it's just initially getting the getting the head and the the neck yeah. on. Just flick it over. See if we can push it with our fingers push it into place forcing the clay from the main body and then we can get rid of all the marks with the sponge later but it's important that we get this properly adhered Locked, to. as you say yeah you yeah. see the slip come out of it so the real problem with the air is that if it's in there when you put it in the kiln it explodes it, it expands you see it expands and then bang off it goes and now we're going to run our thumb into it it has to be a very robust join, this, because anything less, it'll just separate in the kiln and it'll have a disaster. That's looking all right. I can smooth those out with the sponge later, the, the lumps and bumps, but that is more or less... Fixed in, we'll do a little bit more. Right now, and there we have it. It has to be trimmed or we'll measured from here down to 21 and a half centimetres. Now, cut it off there so when it's fired, it'll be the 19 and a half centimetre finished thing, as is the genuine article. Do you want a ruler? Uh, yes, please. I'll go and get your ruler. Now, the handle, this is just, I've just put the pattern into it, it'll be pierced later. But we've just got to get that on. What I've got to make sure with this is that you get the centre line at the back and get it vertical so the Handle isn't it's surprising how often you can get it and it looks skew whiffed. So I've, I've measured this slightly, it's about there. Yes, here's the ruler. Right. So we've got to put the slip on there onto this. This is another crucial part because you pick it up, you don't want the handle yeah. falling off. Right, I've got to work pretty quickly with this. You push it, riddle it, and you feel it go clunk and it locks. You can feel it lock on. This really has to be very well attached. Yes, the handle does it fall off. Obviously, right? yeah. <laughs> but surprised how many people put handles on on mugs and they come off. You know, it's just when you they don't press it till they feel that locking motion. It's like of, getting in gear in a car, isn't it? Yeah, you, so. you feel like the clunk and it's stopped then. If you try and force it, it'll break. 
Just trying to make sure we fill that joint in there. There. Right. Good. So that's the handle on? That's the handle on. Now we've got to measure the height to 21 and a half. So we get like 10% shrinkage, which will be roughly 19.5 once it when it's fired. So specs on, but stab in my face. 21 and a half. There we are, that's the height. Now I've got to hold this at the, at the same height. This is the trick with spinning it and not moving my hand. Now we're going a little bit deeper, more slowly. Just a question to keep going around and around, slightly deeper and deeper till we get it. to separate now, possibly. There we are. Just got to sponge that up. And you get all the detail in, like drawing in, like right, so you get a sharper detail than you would do in the mould. Uh, the hair bit. Yeah. yeah. See, compared to where it is here, yes. you, get, you get a much sharper. And the glaze will fill. The glaze will fill those and some of those gaps. Highlight them, you see. Yeah. Get rid of that. It's just, especially when you turn it into the light. So Gogo would probably have done this with the back of his brush as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's basically what we do. We'll go, we'll go all over it with, with that kind of stuff. Same with, same with the tash. We'll put some lines in that. So I noticed you're not really looking at the photographs anymore. You've got the. You've got it in your brain now, haven't you, what I've, it's meant to be? Yeah, I've got it locked into my bone dome now. Your bone dome? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right, a bit on the beard, a bit on the beard. I won't do it all now, but get it sorted and then we can hopefully get it dried and into the kiln. I'll sharpen these little goatee bits up here. Amazing. I just keep being struck by um, your confidence when you do this. You, you just do it. You don't refer to anything. You're just doing it. Yeah, it's I wonderful should. to watch. Really? I think so. I think, mm. I think just confidence is the word for it. So what it means is that although this is Gauguin's self-portrait jug, mm. there's a there's so much Sean Greenhouse in it in terms of your little bits of interpretation and... Uh, yeah, I, sp I suppose so, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm. So is it true that when you were, like, at your height as a forger, that you were working in the garden shed? Ah, uh, well... It's the, got a myth about you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the police kind of elaborated on that. I did, I did some stuff in my garden, my dad's garden shed, but the, I'll have to put that on the cloth there so it doesn't, it'll stick to the metal when it's being wet. But I, I'd like, I... Uh, a workshop here and there to do stuff in like the bigger stuff in metal work and, that. and sculpt the stone sculpture obviously with the noise it makes you couldn't really do that in a, an urban setting so i did do something in my dad's garden shed so you're just going to sign it now is that right or yeah you got the uh, p go in the penis penis. penis this is um such a typical sort of silly Gogan joke in it, the Pago. Yeah. There <laughs> and, we go. And what about your signature? I'll, I'll do that on the inside. I'll have to turn that over a little bit. Yeah. I'll just put my SG. That's you, SG, yeah? Connected. And, and you're bringing this out as a little addition of 10, is that right? Yeah, so I'll, I'll number this 1 of 10. 1 of 10. We'll put the date in as well, I think. Yeah. So there's no confusion when it was made. Wonderful. 20, 22. So some lucky bugger at so some point. Are. Yep, they're going to have Sean Green. Nice and June. Go One of ten. Right. That's ready, right. that's ready for firing now. So I can get that in the kiln. Big moment. Yeah. So this is like the first baking we're going to do now. Yeah, right? this is the first firing, yeah. The bisque fire. The bisque fire. Yeah. This is like up to about a, just a hold that. Is that your trusty kiln? This is it, yeah. That's cool. I don't suppose Gorgon had anything as uh, modern as this. 
Right, we'll get that in the centre of the kiln, centre it up. Right, I think we can... There, we'll have to put the safety catch on. Don't work with it, that being locked. Right, now, I'll program it. I'm going to put it up. How long does it take? The then? initial bisque, I'm going to fire it 150 degrees an hour. Up to about 1100 degrees. It's meant to be the, the full firing temperature, will be like 1200 for stormware. Right. But the bisque firing is like 100 degrees less before we glaze it, and then we take it to its top temperature and it'll shrink to 19 and a half centimeters. So I'll just program that now. So you set the temperature, how long are we going to be? Uh, about eight hours. Eight hours? Yeah. Right. Thanks, I'll see you so, tomorrow then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>